Okay, so here's an example of finding the derivative of a rational function and then finding the equation of the tangent line to the function at the value here, say x equals negative 1. So, let us first find our derivative. As soon as we have the derivative, part b becomes essentially trivial. Well, the derivative dy over dx is the slope of the tangent line at any given value of x for the function. So always remember that you find the slope of the tangent line in two steps. You first find the slope of the secant line, so f of x plus h minus f of x, total change in y over total change in x, but x plus h minus x leaves you with h. That is the slope of the secant line. And of course, if you remember, as you let h approach 0, the secant line will approach the tangent line. Therefore, the slope of the secant line will be approaching the slope of the tangent line. That only happens as we're letting h approach 0. So here, it really is a three-step process. We first evaluate this, then we simplify, and then we let h approach 0. Let's first compute our numerator. We have f of x plus h. Well, now we are making a substitution, right? This is our function f of x. And now we are saying replace x everywhere by now the new variable x plus h. This is 3 times x. So now we replace x. And here, be careful to open your parentheses. Replace all of x by all of x plus h. So all of x plus h is multiplied by 3 over 2 minus x. And again here, be careful. We do 2 minus the whole variable. So it's 2 minus. And now the whole x is negated. So all of x plus h must also be negated. So open your parentheses, minus all of x plus h. And now you have f of x plus h. Replacing everywhere x by x plus h. Minus f of x. That's easy. We already have f of x. And we are to divide all of this by h. Now here is a very simple but really neat idea. Instead of having all of this all over h and have this huge fraction that takes up three lines vertically, if you think of it, we're going to save up one line. If you divide something by h, and now we want to divide all of this by h, dividing by h is the same as multiplying by the inverse, 1 over h. And doing so will allow us to write a more compact solution. Every line, every step of our solution will take up only two vertical lines instead of three vertical lines. This is a good idea. Now we can forget this, and we can proceed. We want to simplify the expression, so we then we can let h approach 0. Well, we have a difference of two fractions. As 1 over h gives us a 1 over 0 case, we have to find a way to cancel h. Well, the only thing we can do here is try and go for a common denominator by cross-multiplying. But first, we'll simplify our life a little bit. If you notice, 3 multiplies the first fraction and the second fraction, so we can pull out 3 as a common factor. And then we will distribute the negative sign here. So if you factor 3, you're left with x plus h on the first fraction. Distribute the negative here, 2 minus x minus h. Minus, we factor the 3, and we're left with x over 2 minus x times, of course, 1 over h. Now we'll put over a common denominator by cross-multiplying. So x plus h times 2 minus x. Minus x 
times all of 2 minus x minus h, right? This times this minus this times this. And of course, all over 2 minus x minus h times 2 minus x. And the whole, of course, the whole thing is multiplied by 1 over h. And now here's the idea. Factors are good, and so if you look at your denominator, it is already fully factored. It is 2 minus x minus h times 2 minus x. It is fully factored. You will never gain anything out of multiplying an expression that is fully factored. So you leave this factored, everything is perfect. Here, on the numerator, it is not fully factored. We have x plus h times 2 minus x minus x times 2 minus x minus h. Because this is not a times but a minus, this is not fully factored. And the only way to cancel out this 1 over h, giving us a 1 over 0 term, we have to expand both of these, we'll cancel things out, and we'll be left with every term being multiplied by h. Once we factor it out, we'll have h over h, which will cancel, and then we'll be able to let h tend to 0. So we're almost done now. So let's expand this. x times this will give us 2x minus x squared, plus h times this will give us plus 2h minus xh. Let's distribute this. So minus 2x, negative x times negative x is positive x squared, negative x times negative h is positive xh. all over our denominator, and again, we do not multiply this out, this is fully factored, and factors are good. Now that we have expanded our numerator, the whole point is to see what kind of cancellation we get. And as you'll see, almost everything will go away. We have a 2x here, minus 2x. This cancels out, gone. Then we have a negative x squared, positive x squared, it cancels out, gone. Then we have a negative xh, positive xh, also cancels out. So you see, everything goes away except for 2 times h. Let us rewrite now the simplified expression. Well, what we have on top is 3 times 2h times 1 over h, but it's just times 1, so I'll leave it as 3 times 2 is 6h, so we have 6 times h over our denominator 2 minus x minus h times 2 minus x. And of course the whole fraction is multiplied by 1 over h. And now we can cancel the h. If you notice, h here multiplies everything on our numerator, h here multiplies everything on the denominator. So h is a common multiple on top and on the bottom, it can be cancelled out. And every time you cancel out an h on top with a 1 over h, coming out of your division by h, then we'll have an expression where we can then let h approach 0 and we'll be done. So we have, finally, 6 over 2 minus x minus h times 2 minus x. And now we can let h approach 0. So there is no h anywhere except for here. So as h approaches 0, this term negative h will go away. It will shrink to 0. So what are we left with? Well. Quite simply, 6 stays 6 on top over 2 minus x as this goes away. So we have 2 minus x times 2 minus x. That is, of course, 2 minus x 
all squared. And there you go. That is dy over dx, the derivative of our function at any given x value. So quite simply put, if you look at the original function and you ask at any given value of x, what is the slope of the tangent line to the function at that point, the answer is 6 over 2 minus x all squared. So now we have our derivative. We can now easily answer part b, therefore finding the equation of the tangent line to the function at x equals negative 1. Right? This was the question. So I'll just rewrite what we have so far. The equation for the function, our point of tangency, and of course our derivative that we have just found. So our function is 3x over 2 minus x. Our derivative for any x we found to be 6 over 2 minus x all squared. And we want the tangent line for the value of x being negative 1. OK. Well, first, the tangent line is a line. So its equation is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Well, as always, we find the slope. m is the slope of the tangent line, but by definition, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So m is the derivative, dy over dx, but we don't want the slope at any given value of x. We want the slope specifically when x equals negative 1. So we have to evaluate our derivative our slope at x equals negative 1. And we signify this by using a vertical bar, x equals negative 1. This means evaluate the function of x at x equals negative 1. So our derivative is this, and now we replace x by the value of interest being negative 1. So what do we have? 6 over 2 minus negative 1 is 2 minus minus 1, which is 2 plus 1, therefore 3. So 3 squared. So we have 6 over 9 is our slope. But you can simplify a little bit, cancel a 3 on top and on the bottom, and you have a slope now of 2 thirds. So we're halfway done. Our tangent line has a slope of 2 thirds at x equals negative 1. So y equals 2 thirds x plus b. And then we need an equation that will allow us to solve for b. Well, if you remember, the tangent line touches the curve at the given point of interest. So what is our point here? Well, we already have the x value. It is negative 1. We need the y value the y value of our function at negative 1. So replace in our expression for y as a function of x, x by negative 1. So we'll get 3 times negative 1, negative 3, over 2 minus negative 1 is 2 plus 1, 3. So we end up with a very simple point being negative 1, negative 1. Purely coincidental here. And now we replace, because a point is on the line only if it satisfies the equation of the given line. This is our x value. This is our y value. And now we replace. The y value here happens to be negative 1 equals 2 over 3 times the x value, which is negative 1 also. Again, purely coincidental, plus b. And now we can isolate for b quite easily. What you have now is negative 1 equals negative 2 thirds plus b. Add 2 thirds on both sides. And so you'll get 2 thirds minus 1 equals b. But 2 thirds minus 1 
1 being 3 over 3 leaves you with negative 1 third. And now you have the y-intercept. So finally, the equation of the tangent line to the function at the value x equals negative 1 is y equals negative a positive 2 thirds x plus b, which is negative 1 third. If you wanted to, you could write all of this as 2x minus 1 all over 3. Not that it really matters. And so here's the equation of our tangent line, either like this or like this. So always remember, once you have the derivative as a function of x, this gives you the slope of any tangent line for any given value of x that you want. So pick a value of x, you have the slope of your tangent line, and to solve for your y-intercept, you simply have to look at the point of tangency, given the x value, find the corresponding y value on the function, replace in your equation that will allow you to solve for b, and then plug in back and get the equation of your tangent line. And that's it.